Hello and welcome to the program. Lymphedema is at worst a terrible affliction and at best can be a serious inconvenience to your life, but you can make it easier to live with. This video is intended as a guide to assist people in the self-care of their lymphedema and provides general guidelines for this if you've been diagnosed. You should consult your doctor or lymphedema therapist before commencing any self-treatment or exercise program. And if you experience any pain, distress or any other symptoms during or following the techniques shown on this video, you should stop immediately and consult your treating doctor. To understand lymphedema, it helps to have some understanding of how the lymphatic system functions. The lymphatic system is closely associated with the blood circulation system and both need to work together in order to keep us healthy. Blood is pumped by the heart to the lungs where it picks up oxygen. This oxygen-rich blood flows via the arteries to all parts of the body. As the blood flows through tiny vessels called capillaries, fluid containing oxygen and nutrients is released into the tissues. Any excess fluid is collected into the lymph capillaries, which carry away dead cells, excess proteins, special white blood cells, fats and debris. This fluid is called lymph. Lymph is transported by small lymphatic vessels, some of which lie just under the skin, into larger collecting vessels and then to a deeper system of lymphatic vessels and ducts to finally empty fluid back into the venous or blood circulation. The largest collecting vessels are in the abdomen and chest and they finally connect with the large veins at the base of your neck. The flow of lymph fluid from smaller vessels to larger vessels can be likened to a river which begins as a small creek gradually flowing into larger streams, then in one direction only, finally reaching the sea. On its journey, lymph is filtered through many nodes throughout the body, such as in the groin, axilla and the abdomen. The lymph nodes help to remove unwanted matter, assisting with bacterial and viral immunity in order to keep us healthy. Lymphedema is swelling which can affect any part of the body as a result of the failure of the lymph drainage from that part of the body. It is most commonly seen in the arms and the legs. The face, genitalia, abdomen and even the internal organs can be affected. Primary lymphedema occurs when the lymph drainage system itself or its components are deficient or it fails to work properly. The main cause of secondary lymphedema in Australia and New Zealand and other developed countries is cancer treatment, both surgery with the removal of lymph nodes and radiotherapy. Worldwide, the most common cause is certain infections such as filariasis. But anything that damages the lymph system, such as severe tissue injury, fractures, burns or infections, can undermine lymph drainage and cause lymphedema. Obesity can be a contributing factor. Lymphedema can affect anybody at any age. It can affect children as young as newborn babies right up to old age. And then the process began of bandaging and, and diagnosing and so from Four days old, she was in five layers of bandaging and massage three times a day with the bandages off and on in between. So it was quite a, quite a journey we went on from there and trying to find some answers. Lymphedema is easily recognised in its most severe form with stagnating lymph flow, chronic skin and underlying tissue changes occur. The skin thickens and cracks or bubbles up and the skin below becomes solid, fibrotic and even woody. This is called elephantiasis. However, early forms of lymphedema are often missed or ignored. Any persistent swelling for more than three months is likely in part to be due to failure of the lymph drainage from the area of swelling. Early diagnosis allows early treatment and ultimately a better outcome. I think looking at my story, I was very fortunate that I was directed to get 
a good diagnosis and having had the diagnosis uh, was directed to the best possible people to treat it very early uh, and this made a significant difference in, in my treatment and I think that's what people have to be aware of. The sooner you treat this disease, the better the treatment the outcomes are going to be. There's a lot of people that have been living with it for years and years with tissue damage and everything and all that can happen then is manage it. All people at individual risk of developing lymphedema would benefit from early diagnosis and early intervention. A qualified lymphedema therapist can consider your symptoms such as swelling, discomfort or heaviness, examine your arm or leg to look for any scarring or joint movement issues and assess size changes in your arm or leg using a tape measure and bioimpedance. Bioimpedance is a clinical tool that your therapist may use that can help detect lymphedema before there are any visible signs of swelling. There is no cure for lymphedema, however it can be controlled and managed well. For over 20 years, effective treatment called complex lymphedema therapy has been available in Australia. Best outcomes can be achieved with appropriate self-treatment and ongoing self-care. With professional help, your home self-care program will become part of your daily routine. There are four easy things to do each day. Skin care, self-massage, exercises, and wearing your compression garments. Simple skin care is important. It keeps the skin in good condition and protects against infection and the chronic skin changes that can occur with lymphedema. Good personal hygiene is also important. Time your skin care at the beginning or at the end of the day to fit in with your shower time or when changing clothes. As soap may dry your skin, you may want to use a soap substitute, aiming for a pH neutral skin product. Take care when drying your skin, especially in creases, folds and between the fingers or toes. Fragile skin should be patted dry rather than rubbed. Use a non-perfumed moisturiser daily. If you are wearing a compression garment, allow the cream to absorb into your skin before putting on the garment. Inspect your skin daily for any signs of broken skin or redness. If you have lower limb lymphedema, you may need to seek the expertise of a podiatrist for cutting your toenails. Treat any foot and skin or nail conditions promptly. Try to prevent cuts or scratches and if they occur, treat promptly by applying an antiseptic solution and dressing. Use an electric shaver while shaving to avoid cutting your skin. You can avoid insect bites by using insect repellents. Use a high factor sunscreen to protect the swollen skin from sunburn. Avoid baths with hot water and hot saunas. Because the lymphatic system is damaged, bacteria are not destroyed within the lymph nodes and remain in the swollen tissue. This can cause further tissue damage and is one of the main reasons why lymphedema can get worse. Bacteria can spread more easily in the blood system causing septicemia, which is a life-threatening condition. Swollen skin can become dry and cracked. The small breaks in the skin can be the entry site for bacteria that can cause infection in the skin and the tissue beneath the skin. This infection is called cellulitis. Increased swelling, heat or redness of the skin can indicate the start of cellulitis. Sometimes cellulitis starts with a rash. Cellulitis can make you feel unwell, as if you're going down with the flu. You may feel feverish, start shivering or have muscular aches and pain. I then developed, um, had three bouts of uh, cellulitis, so infection became a real problem for me. Um, I had a fourth one within the 12 months and the arm went backwards quite seriously then because the texture in the arm changed. Fluid gathered fairly easily. Whenever I exercised or was in heat, um, the fluid would also accumulate, so it became quite a difficult management prospect. Um, the only way I could manage it was by coming to Mount Wilga and the girls doing treatments on it or we'd do intensive two-week periods on it. Um, but it, uh, 
At the same time, I developed a fairly comprehensive program myself at home. I swam because I couldn't any longer exercise by walking or running because the arm would blow up. The other things that I've done at home are I have I do self massage and I do that not every day, not religiously every day, um, because the swimming is a form of massage anyway. And I find the laser works very well with it as well. So I've maintained it pretty well. The infection has been my biggest issue by far. Um, it sets me back every time. Um, and I've been on prophylactic antibiotics for 12 months to manage that. If you think you're developing cellulitis, you must see your GP immediately as you will need antibiotic treatment. For those people with lymphedema who experience repeated bouts of cellulitis, preventative antibiotics may be advisable. Once you have started your antibiotic treatment, try to rest until you start to feel better. You will need to complete the full antibiotic course and may need to have a second course. I think the single most important thing is to be vigilant and to be vigilant particularly with infection. I'm I'm very, very careful now about um, doing things, getting cuts on my hands, tiny little cuts that, where the infection must have got in because there was nothing I really uh, noticed that should have led to an infection, but it was there. And once it's in there, it takes a long time to move. For the purposes of this video, massage will be performed with our demonstrator wearing clothing for modesty. In the privacy of your own home, massage should be completed directly on your skin. Bras should be removed and underwear should be loose and comfortable. The self-massage demonstration shows basic techniques. You should consult your lymphedema therapist to see if this massage is appropriate for you. Massage is not recommended if you have cellulitis or a fever. If you have abdominal or genital swelling, you should contact a qualified lymphedema therapist. The massage is quite easy. It is soft and light, done with relaxed hands moving slowly over the skin, complementing the slow rhythm of the lymph vessels. There are two main techniques, circular massage and stroking. Circular massage is used over the healthy lymph nodes, Using the flat of your hand, move in a slow circular motion. This will stimulate the nodes in readiness to accept more fluid. Five repetitions are sufficient, but they can be repeated again during your massage. Stroking is done to move lymph towards these nodes. With a relaxed hand to conform to the contours of the body, apply sufficient gentle pressure to move the skin. It should feel comfortable and not cause the skin to become red. Your massage needs to fit easily into your day and it can be done at any time of day. About 15 to 20 minutes of self-massage is sufficient. Your massage can be completed with decongestive exercises. These exercises will be covered in more detail in the exercise component of this video. We're now going to show you examples of specific massages for swelling in one leg. The massage will stimulate the important lymph nodes and collecting vessels that are along the pathway towards the armpit on the same side as the swollen leg. The important nodes are in the neck, armpit, abdomen, groin and behind the knee. First take five deep breaths. Place your hand on your abdomen just below the rib cage. As you breathe in, feel your hands rise. As you breathe out, give a little overpressure. Repeat this five times. Next, you can add in arm and leg movement. Leg movement, combined with deep breathing, encourages lymph flow through the nodes behind the knee, in the groin, and deep within the abdomen. By bending and stretching your leg in time with your breathing, this will have the added benefit of pushing lymph through nodes in your abdomen, groin and behind your knee. As you breathe in, lift and stretch your arms upwards. This expands your rib cage. Now as you breathe out, bring your arms down. This can be repeated five times, 
but take care not to get giddy with overbreathing. Begin the massage by moving your hands to either side of your neck, just below your ears. You may use the flat of your fingers or the back of your hand. Ensure that you do not press too firmly on your neck. Gently stroke downwards from behind your ear towards your collarbone. Do this slowly five times. Now it is time to massage your trunk. For each area demonstrated, try to repeat five times. Begin by clearing the nodes in the armpit on the affected side. This is to help clear the exit for the drainage pathway from the groin and leg. Use circular massage with the flat of your hand move in an upward circular direction. This will help to stimulate these lymph nodes in readiness to accept more lymph which will be directed towards these nodes. Staying on the affected side, begin massage strokes on the trunk moving from the waist up towards the armpit. Next, make longer strokes from below the waist to move the fluid over the waistline finishing in the armpit. Now move to the abdomen to stimulate the deep system. Place your hands on your abdomen just below the rib cage. As you breathe in, feel your hands rise. As you breathe out, gently press your hands down into the abdomen. This will stimulate the many hundreds of nodes in the abdomen to encourage them to work efficiently. To massage the nodes in the lower pelvis, place your hands above the pelvic bones. After clearing your trunk well, if you are able to reach, you can also massage your leg. Remember to try and repeat five times. Using a wedge cushion may make this task easier for you to reach your legs. To empty the nodes in the groin, place your hands in the triangle area at the inside top of the leg. Repeat the circular massage strokes here five times. A skin brush or soft long handled body brush available from pharmacies can also be used instead of your hands to help you reach your leg. Stroke the skin with the brush so that it works in the same way as hand massage. It should not cause redness or chafing of the skin. Place your hands around your leg. Allow them to move over the skin, gently sweeping up your leg. Start at your thigh before doing your lower leg. When massaging your thigh, try not to sweep directly to the genital area. Rather, move fluid to the outside of your thigh. You can combine movement with your massage by bending and stretching your leg to encourage the nodes in the groin and behind the knee to empty. Sometimes it helps to do a little extra finger kneading around the ankle bones, especially if the tissue is firmer here. Finally, be sure to once again empty the lymph nodes in the armpit. It's great to have a partner or friend willing to help with your massage, especially for those hard to reach places such as your back and buttocks. If you do not have a friend to help you, you can use a body brush with a long handle. Use the same sequence as for the massage that was described previously, repeating five times. First you or your partner can clear the lymph nodes in the armpit. Then your partner can massage your upper back towards the armpit, gently moving the skin. Let your partner know if the massage is too firm. Next, begin the strokes lower down the back, moving over the waist. Each longer stroke is helping to direct the flow in the correct direction. Stroke upwards towards the armpit. I had through this whole period needed a lymphatic drainage massage. I was very, very fortunate. I have two close friends and they have massaged me. One of them has massaged me every second day as much as she could and the other one would take over 
when that wasn't possible. And um, this process has really helped me through. When both legs are swollen, there is twice as much of the body to massage. However, this can be fairly easily done, taking just 20 minutes. Begin by clearing the nodes in the neck and armpit, as we have seen earlier, first on one side, then on the other. Or they can both be done together. Use alternate single-handed strokes on one side first, starting just above the waist and stroking up to the axilla and then repeat this on the other side. You can use both hands at the same time, especially from the lower abdomen and upwards over the waistline. Then continue to move this fluid up towards the armpit, remembering to do this on both sides. Once again, finish with circular massage of each armpit. Now move to the abdomen to stimulate the deep system as we saw earlier. Finish with several deep breaths. Compression garments are another essential part of lymphedema treatment. You should consult your qualified lymphedema therapist for prescription of compression garments, such as your stocking or sleeve, as your own medical history needs to be taken into consideration. If your garment is too loose, it will not work effectively. New prescription should occur every six months. However, your garments may need replacing more frequently if you lead a more active lifestyle or if you are overweight. There are many different brands and types of garments available. As well as sleeves, gloves and stockings, there are also special garments such as toe caps for swollen toes and garments to help control genital or breast edema. There are also garments that can assist with softening firm areas of tissue. The concept of wearing garments can cause some patients some concern. It may take you a little while to get used to your garments. As far as putting the garment on each morning, I, uh, I, I get out of bed, I have my shower, I um, have a cup of tea and I walk around, sniff the air outside and then go and sit, it, get dressed and then the garment goes on and of course socks and shoes. But uh, yeah, it's not, wouldn't be 30 minutes after I get out of bed that the garment's on my leg. I, I really don't like walking around without it now. I, I just hate to ever see the ankle go back to what it used to be like. So I don't have a problem with it. It goes on quite easily. It was a bit of a struggle at first. There's been a few bad words spoken and snag nails. and <laughs> But the pink rubber gloves are the real go for getting it up. <laughs> it is best to put your garment on first thing in the morning after your shower when your swelling is minimised. It is a great discomfort to wear the garments, uh, to put them on every morning, to have your legs and body moisturised. Um, but you get used to it because you know it's going to help you in the long run. So every morning I know I get up extra half hour earlier, I have a shower, moisturise my legs, wait for the moisturiser to dry off a bit, then I put my garments on, and then I put my bodysuit on, and I'm ready for the day. And I just, I seem to, um, seem to just got over that initial shock of putting the garments and wearing them, and I feel that it's a positive. Now it's a part of my life. Every day, it's like uh, going, having a cup of coffee every morning. Use a rubber glove to put on your sleeve or stocking to protect the garment and your skin and to help smooth out any wrinkles. You may or may not need to sleep in your garment at night. This needs to be discussed with your treating therapist. Do not double over the garment at the ends as this may cause a tight band which will make the swelling worse. Garments must fit comfortably if you feel pain, pins and needles or numbness, take it off and ask for advice from your therapist. There are a few aids that can assist with applying and removing your garment. Likewise, a particular style of garment, such as one with
increased bone density and heart health. The use of exercise in combination with compression garments is considered to have an added effect on lymph flow. If you have been prescribed a garment, it is recommended that you wear it when exercising. Exercise intensity should be progressed gradually and slowly with guidance from your treating lymphedema therapist or exercise physiologist. This is about functional exercise. We all exercise our muscles in different ways by moving around and carrying out our day-to-day -day activities. This functional exercise doesn't have to be completed in a gymnasium. You can exercise by taking part in activities such as walking, bike riding and swimming. When I say being proactive, I think you've, that's what I regard swimming as, being something that keeps the arm fit, it keeps the fluid moving in the arm and it keeps the muscles toned so that they'll pump the fluid out of the arm. Even tasks such as hanging the clothes out on the line, vacuuming and cleaning can be considered as exercise. Remember to maintain good back and shoulder posture when completing all tasks. Specific lymphatic exercises include decongestive exercises, cardiovascular exercise, stretches and resistance training. Decongestive exercises form the warm-up component of your exercise session and encourage draining of the groin and underarm lymph nodes and larger abdominal vessels. These exercises assist with the flow of lymph and prepare the working muscles, cardiorespiratory and lymphatic system for the workout ahead. Deep breathing can help the deep lymph system to work better. The diaphragm is a large sheet of muscle which stretches across the body between your chest and abdomen. As you breathe, the pressures change inside the chest and this helps the deep lymphatic system to work better. This will in turn help the lymph drain out of the limbs. Breathing exercises can be done any time and should be done at the beginning and at the end of your self-massage and exercise routine. You can incorporate your breathing exercises with your general exercise regime. Other forms of exercise that encourage deep breathing and limb movement, such as Tai Chi, can be very beneficial. Stand upright and look straight ahead. With arms relaxed by your side, gently roll your shoulders forwards in a slow and controlled manner. Maintain normal breathing. Once you have completed forward shoulder rolls, repeat this exercise in a backwards direction. Stand upright and look straight ahead. Raise arms outwards to the side in an alternating manner. Movement should be slow and controlled. You are aiming on deep breathing throughout the exercise and with the arm movement gently stretching and opening up through the sides of your trunk. If your shoulder movement is restricted, start with small arm raises and gradually increase as movement improves. Lie on your back with your knees bent and feet flat. Take a big breath in and as you inhale, bring your knee towards your chest. As you exhale, slowly lower your leg back down. This can also be done in a sitting and standing position. Set your posture when standing. March on the spot with high knees. If able, swing your arms as if walking. Stretches should be felt in the muscle and surrounding tissues, but should never be painful. Body position is important for an effective stretch and best results are achieved by stretching gently for 15 to 20 seconds. Leaning against a wall or rail, stand in a lunge position. Keep your front leg bent and your back leg straight. Push your back heel toward the floor until a gentle stretch is felt in your calf muscle. Holding onto a support, rest your leg on a step. 
Keeping your legs straight, pull your toes backwards towards you and gently lean forward until a stretch is felt behind your knee or thigh. If you do not have a step to use, this stretch can also be performed on the ground. Cardiovascular exercise includes activities such as walking, swimming, cycling, jogging or aerobics that are designed to make you huff and puff so as to improve the efficiency of your heart and lungs. Aerobic exercise also increases pressure in the abdomen which encourages lymphatic draining. Your muscle pump will also be utilised. Walking is a great way to boost your fitness as it is easily accessible to everyone, doesn't require fancy machines and your only cost is a pair of good walking shoes. Try to walk at a brisk pace each day. Walking should be done during the cooler periods of the day to avoid overheating. Higher intensity exercise may be suitable if you are accustomed to it and your lymphedema is well controlled. Other examples of exercising for fitness is hydrotherapy. Your therapist can prescribe a customised program for you. If you have joint problems, hydrotherapy removes the weight of your body off your joints so you may be able to complete exercises easier in the pool than you can on land. Pool activities are also a great way of encouraging exercise as it can be fun. I developed a fairly comprehensive program myself at home. I swam because I couldn't any longer exercise by walking or running because the arm would blow up. Um, so swimming became my best friend really and I found swimming fantastic for it. Um, it always um, moves the fluid out of the body, uh, keeps the muscles fit. So um, I swim three times a week. Strength training involves moving your body or body part against a load or resistance. This could include using your body weight, free weights or therabands. Step on and off a step repeatedly. Hold on to a support if necessary. Stand upright and hold on to a support. Keeping your knees together, curl one leg upwards behind you. Hold for a moment, then return to the original position. Sit in a firm chair with your feet planted flat on the floor. Practice standing and sitting in and out of the chair. When performing this exercise, ensure legs remain parallel and equal weight is felt through each leg. If you find this exercise too difficult, place a cushion on the chair to raise its height. If you find this too easy, complete without using the armrests of the chair. To conclude your exercise session, repeat your deep breathing exercises and do gentle leg exercises such as heel raises. Stand upright with legs straight. Holding onto a support, rise up onto your toes. Hold for a moment, then lower slowly. At home, this exercise can be performed at the kitchen sink, which allows you to hold onto a support with both hands. You can come up onto your toes with both legs together. You can also pump your ankles by coming up onto the ball of your foot with one leg at a time. So if you're not doing enough exercise, hopefully these suggestions will help you to become more engaged. Lymphedema is a tough thing to live with. It certainly changes your life and also often that of those who love and support you. There's some amazing people, patients and carers who have contributed to this program and what follows is a few closing comments from them. For full versions of each of their interviews, Look for their stories on the DVD or on the website. There is a great deal that you can do on your own as part of your ongoing health maintenance to successfully care for your lymphedema. The message that I'd convey to anyone who has lymphedema is don't let it take charge of your life. You are free. You can manage things. You can do exercise. You can look after yourself and you can enlist all those close people who want to help you. 
So I guess that'd be my advice. Vigilance with infection, um, exercise, proactive and massaging. And get on with your life. I mean, well, we've got over cancer, so this one's just a management issue. My advice for other people who are suffering from lymphedema, and it doesn't matter how young or old you are, or how big or small you are, you need to have treatment. Uh, it'd be uh, to speak to a specialist and someone who knows about that actual disease. Um, and you need to get it treated straight away because it can only affect you ongoing, non-stop. So you need to get specialist help straight away. Um, I got specialist help and it's helped me immensely. It's turned my life around. A lot of them don't realise uh, that it, when you first get diagnosed that this isn't going to go away in a hurry. And uh, you have to sort of set up your life to uh, incorporate the lymphedema and not ignore it. Otherwise, you don't go for the treatment and it'll get worse. If you're diagnosed with um, lymphedema, my recommendation is that you get active and do something about it as soon as you can. My advice would be always to have your um, treatments. Keep it up. Don't think that you've had one, you'll miss a year and you'll come back the next year. I always find that it keeps it well maintained and well controlled to continue your um, complex therapies. It's very important to me because it keeps me mobile. I would say that. I find when I talk to lots of people they say, oh well, it's such a long way to come or um, finding time, but really it's something you have to set time aside for. I guess just, you know, for anybody else out there going through what we're going through is just don't be afraid to admit defeat. Don't be afraid to say, I'm not coping. And, I mean, I got personal depression with Misha just because it all just became way too much and I just couldn't cope. And so, you know, it's just a part of life and... Just don't be embarrassed about it. There's people out there that want to help and do care for you. That you know, you, it's, you don't just don't be afraid. Thank you to all those who have so honestly shared their inspirational stories, their challenges, and successes with their treatment and self-care. It's hoped that this video will also assist you to not only live well with your lymphedema, but to thrive into the future.